All right, let's um, let's go to Fanny. She's calling us KRKS is the station, Denver, Colorado. Hi, Fanny. How are you today? Hello, I'm great. Um, my estranged husband for a year. He had been married five times previously. Mm -hmm. And before we got baptized, he got baptized the second time before we married. We were then married for 15 years, and he started to say that I was an adulterer. He was married to an adulterer because um, I had married and divorced 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, he's into porn, alcohol, weed. He's a minister. Um, he's been into porn for 50 years. And we've been to many counselors, Christian counselors, and I had to leave that situation because of total disrespect. He was a rageaholic, critical, lying, never met his father, um, lies like a four-year-old. His mother refused to tell him about his dad, and I even heard him lying and telling people that he was adopted. Okay, so, so what's the question for us? That's a horrible situation you were in. Am I an adulterer? I, <laughs> I, I, because he's told people this in the church, and I just, I could not believe it. Okay. Um, so he was defaming you, yet he has a much more colorful history than you do. Very colorful, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. Is he still uh, in ministry? Um, probably so. Um, we're uh, separated, so I really don't know. But it had affected me so much until I stopped going to church because I saw, being in church for 60 years, I saw so many ministers fall because of lust problems. And it was just hard for me to, and it is hard for me now, to look at a minister and see him bringing forth a message and wondering what he's doing behind closed doors because of what I went through behind closed doors for almost 20 years with this. Sure, um, yeah. But there are so many, 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 many wonderful ministers who are people of great integrity mm -hmm. and well-connected to their spouses. And so I, I think, you know, you could you do yourself a, a great favor to, you know, resolve that so that you're not putting your experience onto some other folks and then robbing yourself of the opportunity to be in church, a good, solid well, church. Well, I, I agree with that, and I definitely will work on that. But, you know, the reason why I really don't feel bad about it is because I did speak to the I think it was the fourth wife, and she told me that he did the same thing to her with the porn and the marijuana and the preaching, and mm -hmm. yeah. she could no longer take it. So, Why do you think people I, I are so interested in keeping him being a minister? Mm -hmm. why, didn't his, why didn't that wife tell folks, hey, um, he shouldn't be in the ministry? Because we, I don't know, we're so glad to get away from him, we just want to forget the memory, the bad experience, the bad dream. It's horrible. So, Fanny, <laughs> I, I, I think you asked the question, am I an adulterer? And I'm, I'm going to say something that may sound um, very unusual, but it happened, what, 40 years ago, did you say? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I'm going to ask the question or make the statement, what does it matter at this point? You see, well, well, because you've lived your life, it's all over. It's a thing of the past, and it is no longer a a, a red scarlet letter that you have to mm -hmm. wear around your neck. It's 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 over. And whatever happened to you in that previous marriage is at this point. It's such a long time ago, and I'm worried that you would allow your misguided husband to put a label over your head that that you're reacting to as to the other because i don't think you should wear that label number two it is sad and very sickening the number of people that get into leadership because they are good looking charming great orators or quote unquote they have a lot of he's energy and people he's think that, that this is yeah, the holy the spirit's charisma. endorsement on them and we don't stop and ask what happens behind closed doors before we pay somebody a salary and ask them to preach. 
there are some good guys out there, Fanny, and I hope you find one. I really do. And but you're right. Well, I don't blame your I, I don't blame your suspicion at all. You've been hurt. Yeah, they let him go at the church. They fired him because they saw something was amiss. So, uh, like a um, Connor. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I listen to the show a lot. A con man, um, sure. Like yeah, con, yeah, yeah. Connor, like Connor. Well, he's um, an addict in, in, at yeah. the very yeah. least. Yeah. He's not a healthy guy. All right. right. So I I think the issue also would be is if you did something all those years ago that was adulterous is would would that be the unpardonable sin that you would be living with and I I don't think that that's the unpardonable sin and I think that God is rich in mercy and and I think yeah and and what I wanted to say when I heard all this is what what would it matter what a guy like him said? I mean, I, I wouldn't even give him the time of day. Well, he has no credibility whatsoever. Right, and that's the place you have to get to, Fanny, because mm-hmm. you did believe him. He made you feel special. Mm-hmm. You yeah. bought into the lie, and then he projected yeah. all of his junk on you, and you being a good person just wanting love took it, and it's hard to then peel it off. Mm-hmm. And so that is your task, to now see that this is a lot of, I mean, if you're an adulterer, what is he, really, (laughs) right? Mm, So sad. I just, I hate these kinds of uh, situations. Absolutely hate them, and I'm sorry that you ended up in one. But you don't have to. And and I would encourage you to get some counseling so that you're not having Mm -hmm. uh, just to figure this out on your own. And I would get in a women's Bible study and get back in a healthy, a whole church. Well, and I'm really glad you called. Anne, I'm going to send, yeah, go ahead. Can I Jill. just say, Ann, you're mm-hmm. separated, Fanny. I'm wondering if him calling you an adulterer creates a fear to then move out of this relationship. Mm-hmm. Good point, and Jill. that's a way of him holding you hostage. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Jesus was quite clear that you commit adultery if if you marry somebody that's divorced um and and they unless it was they're unfaithful um and or they abandoned you as a believer is another situation there so yeah could be his another form of his manipulation